welcome welcome to yet another video about the d5 render engine so like a month or so ago they reached out to me by they i mean the five people and they asked me if i would like to do an overview of their render engine real-time render engine and i of course i agreed and i recorded the video i uploaded the video um and then showcased it to you guys and in the comments there were a lot of requests to do a follow-up uh, with me explaining on how to set up custom materials how for me to basically explain custom materials as well as to do a showcase on animation capabilities of d5 and here we are so d5 are sponsoring this video for me to do like the follow-up tutorial showcasing both the the materials as well as the animation workflow for you guys so i think without any further blah 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 let's just jump in and let me show you what's up all right so let's let's start with materials right Let, let's let's begin with me explaining how materials work and how you can edit them here in d5 so in the previous video i've explained the asset editor right or, or asset library that d5 has this bad boy right here well the problem with it is that all of the materials in the asset library are very what's the word um you either use use these or you don't use anything right uh so you if, if you don't know how to create your own material then you're kind of stuck only choosing from from these right while with uh, sorry while while with the custom materials right you you will be able to just download any textures that you want from the internet or maybe even draw the textures yourselves and that will enable you to have a much much wider range um i will be showcasing uh, the all of the materials on or as well as the animations on this particular file here and this is just the complete continuation of where we left off in our first video so if you if you want this file in particular consider becoming a patreon supporter because those guys get these files for free um, but if you don't then just follow along with a box that's absolutely fine um, you will not lose anything by doing so so uh, let's let's begin enough blabbing um, so I will work on this material let's say or, or or on this type of geometry just so that it's easier for me to showcase the stuff for you or maybe here because this looks like a nice nice place and the way you basically access the material that you have here is by just selecting the object you know by just clicking on it and on the right hand side it's going to open up um, the inspector window where you can inspect the material right or or uh, you can choose this uh, if that doesn't work you can choose this uh, pipette tool right here where my mouse is see you choose this and you click on the object and it's going to do exactly the same thing it's going to open up the inspector window where you can change the material um if i I, I think let's begin with a blank material with a very clean material so i'm going to go to assets very not this is not very i'm sorry d5 asset library to uh, online basic material and i'll just use the base material right here and just apply it to this object like so and here as well close that so the base material is just this kind of a checker box pattern thing that just shows the UVs. Very, very handy. So now as I select the object, I can see that there's like the... Uh, that's strange. There's no base color. There's absolutely nothing here. This is a completely, completely blank material, which is great. That is excellent for me to explain it to you and explain how you can construct the material from scratch. So 
First of all, the name of the material is uh, located here. That doesn't really matter as, uh, as much. Then duplicate button right here. Oh, by the way, notice how I have <clears throat> all of these squished, right? Uh, minimized uh, map UV and advanced. I do that so that there's less visual clutter so that it's easier to follow along. But basically, here you, we have four icons. Um, I'll go from back to front. So, last one is the reset button. It basically resets the parameters of the material back to their default states. Then we have the batch import PBR textures button. So, um, I, I guess I should explain this a little bit later, but just a brief introduction. If, if you download some images like textures from the internet, uh, PBR is physically uh, based physics-based rendering, something like that, like physically accurate um, uh, images, whatever. Uh, so if you download them, they usually come in the whole batch of, of textures that should be D5 should be able to import them all at once and construct the material for you. So this is like a shortcut of how to do it really quickly. Um, I'll, I'll talk about this later. So add to local, what does this do? Well, this actually um, saves the material onto your local hard disk so that you can access it from your assets library anytime you need it. <clears throat> so um, let me show it to you. So add to local, if I click it, successfully add it to local. But what does that mean? Well, if I go to assets here and I go instead of online to local and I check instead of model, I check material, you can see that there is my base one material located right here and i can customize the thumbnail rename it i can rename it to my uh, my first material and i can edit it and, and do all sorts of uh, things with it right but this is my material so now if i go back in here and I can apply it as well. That's that's important. So uh, having it selected, I can just kind of keep keep applying it to different different objects. I will not be doing that for extra objects, only the walls. Okay. So back here, I'll, um, I'm just selecting the wall to get back to this material. So you always need to select the object to actually get access to the settings of the material. Um, and here you can see the name has changed to my first material. That's perfect. And now we have the, you know, now, now you know what add local means. Then we have duplicate. Duplicate is basically the pipette tool, but in reverse. So duplicate is used to apply the material on different objects, right? So if I click on duplicate, you can see that now I am able to, you know, apply the material to anywhere where I am willing to click. I don't want to click anywhere. I have it already applied where I want it. So this stays. Whew, okay, first part done. Then material templates. Let's talk about material templates. So if I expand this, you can see that there are quite a few and I'll go through them really quickly just to explain the basics of it. Uh, custom material. Anything from metal to plastic to leather to fabric um well fabric has cloth but sure um so and any most of the materials are custom materials so if you want something that is not special <laughs> then use custom material then you have transparent materials you know like glass uh gemstones and crap like that Transparency uh, needs to be simulated in these cases for these kind of engines. So it's a material in its own type. Then, well, actually I can just select custom material and you can see that it turns white, you know, so because it's by default just pure white color. If I now change this to transparent, Cablamo, now it's glass, right? If I change this to water, well, it's awkward, but you can see here on the on the side, it's it, it has like water ripples, and I don't even need to explain anything more about this. Car paint, 
Carpet is basically, um, it's like the custom material, only that it also has like a s additional, um, additional layer or additional coating of glossy material, right? On top of it, glossy transparent material, right? So like lac, or, is that an English word? Lac? Doesn't matter. Like glossy stuff on top of your base material uh, is car paint material. Displacement uh, basically is like it's used for rough surfaces, right? Uh, but I would suggest just using the the custom material and adding a normal map because it's much less resource intensive in doing it that way. Then we have cloth material. Um, already talked about cloth um, a, a, a little bit, but let me just quickly check. Yeah, cloth material can be replicated easily with the custom material as well, but if you want to, you can choose choose it here. I wonder if it has something to do with animation and that it's waving in animation. I am not sure. I am sorry. I didn't research that far. Um, custom alpha video. Actually, let me show you a video material because I think this is cool. Video material and for the map, I will just choose one of the failed takes that I did. This is, by the way, my introduction videos <laughs> that you've just seen. So let's uh, let's see let's see this one for instance. Okay, video file can't exceed 200 megabytes. Sure, um, let's go for something then less. This one. So you can add a, a, a video material if you want. That's my eye right there. Weird, isn't it? So, somewhat weird. I will let it play for just a tiny bit. <laughs> my God. I will let it play for just a tiny bit. Um, just because I, I, I think it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's kind of cool. That's a... Wait, let's, let's go closer. There's me. Okay, let's not. Um, let maybe let's not. Maybe maybe let's be normal, right? So video material can be pretty nice. Uh, then we have foliage material, which is basically just. Um, in 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 this case, we are not going to be using it, but. Foliage material is, for instance, this grass right here has been created with the foliage material. So it just creates a bunch of strands and whatnot. And then last one is, oh, sorry, grass material. Foliage is actual plants. Uh, last one is grass. And that one it just, just generates grass on top of any vertical or horizontal surface, such as here, for some reason. Uh, we shouldn't be using it on this wall. Okay, so without uh, messing around anymore, let's jump into custom material because that, that has the most amount of settings. And let me just delete that and delete that. And let's, let's talk. Let's talk about the custom material. So right after the material templates you have invisible and raised ray tracing so this tick mark is if you don't want the material to be calculated um to to participate in calculation of light so if um for instance you you have an emissive material a material that shines light then this will turn it off if you have a material that is transparent it will not affect the light in any way as it's passing through it and and so on so th this should always be turned off for the final production but sometimes you just need things to work fast uh, at that point you um, you tick mark these so that the computer has easier time calculating things 
hope that makes sense then for the maps we have base color right here and base color map these two right so base color well I, I guess it's it's pretty clear what it does right it's it's the diffuse color of the um of the object base color map though that is an image and i do need to get some sort of an image in here to showcase it to you so a, a small little inter uh intervention no a small little, little break here with me showing you polyhaven where you can actually this is not an ad by the way uh just polyhaven where you can get free textures without re registering so here i am just going to find i'm just gonna go for concrete oh painted concrete this looks nice let's go for green painted concrete right so I'm, I'm selecting that and here in the top right corner i'll just choose 4k textures for uh, as a zip file and i'll just download all of them that's 130 megabytes that's fine we will we will survive if your computer actually uh, this is a tutorial let me cancel that and let me choose two key textures because uh why i i don't need that that amount of detailing so i'm just going to stick with two key textures uh, and there we go that is done i'm just gonna play oh portal 2 great game by the way new world great game as well um i'm just going to extract my my textures here and here they are right here my diffuse map my ambient occlusion map my whatever this is have no idea this looks weird uh, whatever right so we have all of these maps and we'll figure out where they go right so now 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 here back back to here base color white base color map i can choose so if i click on this uh, checker box right here and i go desktop and i find my uh, where was it painted concrete of course textures um here i can use the diffuse map and hit open and now it's applied right it looks like garbage like it it looks real bad but it is applied it does it does work okay uh one thing that is important uh, uh, to mention is that if my base color is uh let's go rgb and let's go red if my base color is red then everything gets colored red or you know any other color so for for the true diffuse to show up the base color needs to be pure white this is important other render engines don't do this uh, d5 does this so keep that in mind so you can blend colors this way and you can adjust colors this way back to base color map if i click on this um, more options icon i can see that i can invert the colors i can uh, change the brightness the hue the saturation whatever i want right um in here let's not mess with that so much though so back to back to here then we have normal map so normal map is that blue um there we go is that uh, uh is either this or this this is direct x normal map and this is a uh, gl open gl normal map i assume I, I assume that these guys are using direct x normal maps we will see if that is the case and this is not how you select it this is how you select it and lo and behold oh my god okay so uh, yeah so we do need it to be either png jpeg bmp j jpeg 
TIFF, TIFF or TGA format. That is not a problem. I'll just open the Photoshop and just save it that way. Um, apologies. One little second and then we will continue. By the way, that, uh, just, just to kind of showcase it real quick. Um, open up the DirectX as alpha channel sure you know here here we go and then save um right we need to drop the bits so edit or image mode uh, from 32 bits i believe if we drop to 8 bits then it's gonna work um uh, exposure and gamma controls uh instead of local adaptation adaption adaptation Exposure and Gamma, hit OK, Control alt s JPEG, save, OK, back to D5, normal map, open up, Ugh. doesn't seem like that's, that's, that's correct. Now does it. Okay, what about the other one? We are learning here. Oh, come on. Alpha channel. Image mode, 8 bits. Exposure gamma, save jpeg I'm, I'm going as fast as i can and then here we just change this to uh gl open gl and here we just do one does that look better I have no idea but that's honestly how you how you add it so i assume or, or was it srgb do we need to say that it's srgb so there's always like you always need to mess around with these uh, until they start working. It feels like it's working, but I'm I'm not sure. But I we don't have the time uh, to investigate further. This is how you add it, and just hope for the best. Hope that it works. Okay, let's let's move on. Sorry. Um, so I I did change. Uh, I did go into the additional settings and I changed the normal map from linear, that was this, to sRGB. And it seems like it does work a bit better this way. Once we start playing around with the roughness um, and, and increasing the specular, then we will start seeing if it's actually working. And it does seem like it's... Yeah, the normal map does seem to be does seem to be working quite well. So this actually leads us in quite well to the specular map. This is exactly what it does, right? You, you can see it here. Was roughness one or zero? I don't remember. Let's keep it at one and specular. If it's zero, that means it's completely matte. The surface is completely matte. If specular is one, it's glossy. I assume... Wait. I assume roughness was zero. <laughs> because uh, with roughness set to one, um, the surface cannot be uh, glossy. So this is like the, the, the glossiness of, of it, or rather the reflectivity. Not the glossiness, the reflectivity. The roughness is the... Uh, the glossiness the thing about materials is that they don't have a uniform specular map they usually have a pretty 
um, pretty clear. Mm, diffuse displacement. I wonder what this one is. But usually they, they have pretty different uh, specular maps. Um, like irregular specular maps. In this case, this particular material doesn't seem to have it. So we can kind of play around with this. Uh, usually for specular maps, the true value is somewhere between 0 0.25 for any material that is not metallic. Between 0 0.25 and 0 0.625. Somewhere in that range. So I'm just going to say 0 0.5 for this and uh, we'll forget about it. Then let's jump to roughness. So our roughness right now is at 0. Uh, meaning that we need um, to, to have some sort of a control over it. So roughness is reverse glossiness of a material. So micro irregularities on the surface of the material. And basically you can adjust the roughness with either a map or just a value. Um, in this case, I saw that we do have a map and I'm going to use it, but it's an EXR map. So I'm just going to quickly jump into Photoshop like that. Uh, drop it down from EXR to, sorry, from 32 bits to 8 bits. I wonder if using 16 bits is better probably better but whatever um, now that's our roughness map just save it jump back to d5 and now we have a jpeg version of this that we can add and you can see that the roughness immediately gets gets added in and at this point i can tell that the specular map is too much it's too glossy so i can start dropping it down or, or was it increasing? Hmm. <clears throat> Apparently, the slider uh, for the uh, when when you are using an image, uh, you still need the slider to be maxed out or set to one for that image to actually be registered. And we can, again, color space transfer function. We can use sRGB to um, transfer the color data and just play around with, by the way, that, that texture mapping, we will solve it. But for now, I'm just playing around with the data and uh, not data, the textures until I see like pretty decent reflections here like not too much not not too little so i'm looking at that at, at what kind of reflections are are created there so it needs to be rougher less rougher Something like that. Something like this. Okay. So we have ourselves um, a little bit of a normal map, a little bit of a roughness map. We can continue. Or I think we can also have it inverted. But having it inverted just means that uh, we're applying it as a glossiness map and not as a nor uh, roughness map, so that's bad. Let's not do that. Then metallic. So if I were to just change this to one, now my object is fully metallic, right? And it acts like it's fully metallic, except for the roughness map. Uh, in this case, this is not a metallic object, so I have this set to zero. Um, we have too many textures now applied for me to actually show you metallic, but if you have objects set to be as metallic, at that point, you do not um, 
well you usually don't 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 use these kind of textures you just play around with the normal map as well as the base color right to to, to get the bronze or whatever shine anyway metallic zero ambient occlusion map is yet another one that i saw and it's right here painted concrete ambient occlusion bam and if I increase this, you can see that it basically just darkens the areas which have nooks and crannies. It just adds that additional level of contrast uh, to the texture. And that is that. We are, we are done with the texture creation. And for ambient occlusion, same uh, values here all over. Uh, I will not be explaining those yet again. We have the last one which is emissive if i turn this on and i just set the intensity to 100 now this whole thing just shines <laughs> right it just shines red right so you can you can have a pretty i mean th this looks cool but maybe not 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 right now not right now okay so this is our our little texture and these are the settings that we can change as you can probably see by now, there are no procedural maps and there is no way of how to generate procedural maps. Um, I will be asking D5 people to create that functionality because I feel like it's very important to have procedural maps. But currently you can only use image based textures and image based mapping. That is a limitation. And this column seems to be very lonely. So I'm just going to take duplicate and just poke, apply it to this column right so this is our our little map uh, sorry our little material then i will contract this the, the the maps and i will expand the uv rollout here where i will explain all of these settings so every object in the scene has its u and v directions right or every surface has u and v directions that's like x and y directions and this is just basically how big well now we're dealing with this this object only so maybe that's for the better this is uh how big or how how stretched the texture is uh, in those two directions and you can see that the directions uv directions on this column are rotated 45 degrees that's on purpose that's how i exported them in rhino um, so you can change the size of the object this way right or not the object sorry the material the size of the texture this way you can also play around with the offset so you can make it like that you can position it you know in a nice way uh, where, wherever you want you can play around with the rotation so if i were to do 45 degrees now it's aligned perfectly and and it, very important if you have a messed up model and you can't be bothered with re um uv mapping it then you can use triplanar mapping right here and at that point, this whole thing, we can go back to 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. And what Triplanar mapping is going to be doing, it's just going to take the size of the texture and just going to keep repeating it uh, in X and Y directions. So all of the, the whole texture is mapped onto your object from X, Y, and Z directions. So when i said that i'm going to fix let me escape out of here and select this 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 area right here um come on give me there we go um so when i said i, I will be fixing this corner right here for instance or not the corner but rather this tiling that's what i meant because this tiling is messed up or rather the uv mapping of this tiling is messed up right here underneath uh, but if I choose triplanar mapping, it's a miracle. <laughs> it's fixed, right? 
So that's that's how you do it, right? And the tiling is obnoxious, so I'm just going to stretch it out. Uh, make it make make the x and y value smaller. So let's go for yeah. This is still bad. Something like that, huh? Yeah, something like that will do the trick. 0 0.2, huh? Well, 0 0.2. Here we go. In this case, we can do like 0 0.3 because this is a smaller, um, a smaller piece. Uh, the tiling will not show up as much. But yeah, I, I think that this this will this will work. Um. So that's the tri planner, the strength of tri planner mapping. I think it's pretty damn cool and pretty damn good and then the finally we have the round corner uh, or sorry uvs are done we have round corner options and we have limit color bleeding i'll be honest i have no idea how limit color bleeding works and what it does i tried when enabled the materials diffuse gi will be overwritten with a gray color to result to res To resolve color bleeding note this option is not physically correct so please use this with caution um if i tick mark this nothing happens so i i don't know i uh, technically it should not get colors from the sky though like the bluish tint but it does so i have no idea but round corner though that that's nice so notice how uh, for instance this column right here uh, the corners on it are a little bit, you know, a little bit too sharp. You know this edge, round corner, solves that a bit. I'm not sure if you can see it. Can you see it on the screens? Now it's rounder here. I can make it very drastic. Maybe then you'll see it. So this is with round corner. And this is without. See that very, very strong edge here? Give it a second. See how it disappears? Yeah, that, that, that's rounding it by 30 millimeters. So I'm just going to give it like 10 millimeters, you know, just a little bit. Maybe even less, like 5 millimeters. Just to soften those corners, that it in introduces another uh, level of complexity not complexity but realism because nothing is sharp and perfectly sharp in real world right uh, that is it with the materials i have shown you the custom material which is the most complex one to produce uh, all other materials are much easier and uh, if, if you master the custom material, you should be able to absolutely understand what the hell is it that you need with, you know, the transparent material and whatnot. So that concludes the chapter on materials. Let's jump to making animations. Okay, 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 okay. So animations. Let's, let's not, let's, let's be fast uh, with this. So animations are set up um, through keyframes, so to say, and those keyframes are your scenes, the scenes that you save. Uh, think of it as named views in Rhino, for instance. So my scene one is here and scene two is here. So both of them are kind of, you know, not, not great. So let me just delete both of them. And let's just start, let's just start from scratch. So, for instance, here, just navigating, I will say that I want, mm, that looks ugly, let's go for this, a little bit back, something like that. I want this as my scene, create new scene, there we go, and then I'm just going to whoop, 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 uh, perhaps... And that's a little bit too close. There we go. Uh, this will be my scene too. So I'm just 
creating new scenes as I please. And then as I click scene one, scene two, you can see the transition here. Um, let's make it. Let, let's make it into an animation and render it out. So to do that, uh, once you have your kind of camera scenes are set up, I'm just showing you with two. You can have as many scenes as you want. You go to here, top right corner, video, click on it. And now you will be in the video, uh, how's it called? Like the video editing, uh, and I should be here. Uh, video editing menu settings workflow thing right um, so here you can add shot right um, by by just clicking uh, on 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 this this icon so you add the shot here and then um, as as you are creating more and more uh, or sorry, as you're adding more and more shots, it's going to create the timeline, right? So I've added one shot here, second shot here, and in between it says it's going to be seven seconds. If I want more, I just select that transition time between shot one and shot two, and I type in, actually, give me 10 seconds. And as I press play, you can see how that is going to look like. Right, so that is my uh, transition between shot one and shot two. If I want to create, um, if I don't want to use the scenes, I can just use whatever. For instance, I can just say something like this. Come on, this is too fast. Let's change the settings. Flying speed eight. There we go. So I'm gonna say this is another shot or I can even add another clip if I want to like that clip two, and then add the shot here, but I'm not gonna do that for now. Let me just explain what clips are later. Uh, so I will add another shot like so. You can see that I didn't even need to make a scene here to create a scene here just to be safe. I will be making a scene though <laughs> because I like being able to jump around different uh, views. Uh, and you can see that the transition between my shot two and shot three is 15 seconds. What if I just say zero or 0 0.1, right? And I press play. Wait, why is that? Sorry. Uh, 10 seconds here. Oh, that's not how it works, is it? Yeah, I'm being stupid. Because then this can't be zero. Well, D5 people are going to kill me, but uh, apparently you can't do that. I'm sorry. Good thing we saved the scene three. So I've removed the shot, uh, shot three, and instead I'm going to be creating a separate clip because I want like a sideways transition, and then I want uh, like a punch out transition from the uh, from this scene, and I can only achieve it with a second clip, unless there's something that I don't know about. No, that's that's probably it. Mm, let me try this one last time. Okay, so technically I can achieve it by changing the, cre the keyframe interval of clip 1 to custom rather than auto, but that just seems bad. So let's let's not do that. Instead, let's jump to let's let's do the 10 second 
transition from this to this this is our clip one add another clip clip two is going to be this scene add shot transitioning outwards like that add shot in also 10 seconds play or rather i can save this scene here and then play that is some funky looking rocks but hey hey if it works it works right Actually, I'm interested if I can select the rocks and change their... No, since they are part of the asset editor, uh, asset library uh, of D5, you can't really edit the materials of the rocks. That's, that's weird. Anyway, enough about that. Or are they? not the point right now right now we're dealing with the freaking transitions okay so we have two clips right clip one 10 seconds transition between this and this clip two 10 seconds transition between this and this right um here for clip one i can change the ease in and ease out or, or, or rather how does the animation start and how does it end so if i use ease in and out you can see that it slowly runs ramps up in speed and at the end it's going to slowly come to a halt right so that's ease in ease out uh, i always always use linear because that is more professional uh, same thing here linear key keyframe interval auto sure whatever we we use these settings not a lot of settings here to change honestly so we have these two clips i can change the resolution of them in this case i'm going to use 1080p for both of them uh, i wonder if it changes 4k yeah okay so this is global so it changes for both of them uh, I'm just going to use 1080p format, mp4 for sure, and I can choose to either render uh, or add it to the render queue. I will just choose to render. I assume as I click this button, yes, it does ask me where do I want to save it. For now, I'm just going to save it to my desktop. Why not? Or rather, nope, oh, not here, sorry, right here. And I'll just call it... Uh, sure, D5 clip 1. So notice that it's currently going to render only clip 1 for me. And I wonder if I can... No, I cannot select both of them, unfortunately. So I will need to render them out separately. Clip 1. Save. Now my computer is really starting to, you know, chug. But at this point, it's gonna gonna start rendering. So I will pause the video here and we'll continue after the render has finished. All right we are done we are done so as you probably can tell the animation is a little bit on the fast side and that's because i got impatient and i just kind of shortened both of the clips to five seconds instead of 10 seconds each at 30 frames per second that's what you get um said that it only took like 15 minutes or so to render out, which is not too shabby, even less than that, around 10 seconds. So 10 seconds for two clips, five seconds each, you basically get one minute per second of render time with RTX 3080. Considering the complexity of the scene and the amount of materials, that is really good. I think that is really, really good and acceptable.
So that's it. That's it. I hope you like this one. I hope you will come back for more. If you want more, tell me. Tell me in the comments. As you can probably tell, I do read them and I do, you know, upload videos that the viewers want to watch. So if there are any things that you would like else to be covered about D5 render, write it. Write it in the comments and I will do it. I'll see you the next one. Later. Thank you.